morning. I am very humbled to stand before you on this sanctuary that God has chosen me to speak to you. Uh, if you have your Bible, you can turn with me my consideration of two texts for today's preaching. The first one is considered from uh, Psalm chapter 95, verse 6. It reads, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. And John chapter 24, verse 4. God is God is spirit. And his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. May I request to bow our heads as we go for the prayer. Our eternal and loving Father, we are here to spend time with you. Lord, please use me as an instrument. I am not the speaker. You are the. Feed these believers, your children, with the right message. I do not know what to say, but I hope your Holy Spirit will motivate me to present the message that can be spiritually enlightened for each one of us. Bless our worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My topic for today to share with you is the power of worship. The power of worship. The text, two texts, say we need to come before God with our head down. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. He wants our hearts, our lives, and our total being to offer to Him as we worship our Lord and our Creator. He is our Maker, our Creator. He wants worship. Worship is not only that we can do every Sabbath on the church. Worship can be done anywhere at any time. Through worship, we can praise Lord, our God. Therefore, it is very important in Psalm chapter 40, verse 3 says, God filled with the masses of songs in the mouth of David. David was so excited, so repressed, and so blessed with the company of God. He enjoyed the fellowship of God in every moment of his life. So he could not keep his joy and happiness with himself. He wanted to share his joy to exhibit his feeling of happiness by through songs, by worshiping God, that God, I am so grateful. I am so happy that you are my God. I want to acknowledge you through my worship heavy. Worship can be especially in two forms. One we call is the celebration. The other one is proclamation. Worship should be something to be happy, to be excited. It is not a burden. It is not to be forced. It is, should be something to celebrate, something to praise God. We should be always happy. There should not be excuses of coming to God and worship Him. So it should be a celebration and joy. David himself enjoy being celebrating with God in his worship style every time. He understood 
and realized how he associated with God in his worship. He was never willing to be away from God himself. He never kept himself silent because he realized that how God was so important in his life. He was motivated. He was led by God in every moment of our life. His joy was so excited, full of enthusiasm in his mind. Therefore, he did not want to keep that with him. He wanted to praise God in every moment of his lifestyle and he gave more emphasis on the worship. So he used to sing every time, praising God, because worship cannot be without singing, without praying, without praising God. So very often David used to sing where he expressed his gratitude and praise to the Lord through his worship style. If I ask you and me this morning, can we be like David, that do we have a lesson to learn from David, how he practiced of worshiping God? We need to be very committed we do not come to worship Lord to show each other. We come to build relationship, the personal relationship with God. And that is a very good provision for us that we can worship the Lord and build a personal and corporate relationship with God. Singing was mentioned in the book of Psalm around 68 times because singing is the part of worshiping. Worship cannot be complete without singing. We can only, all we can participate, preacher can cheer alone, but we all listen, but we all can participate in the worship when we sing. So sing is the part of worship, as David mentioned. So Longfellow said, the human uh, the, the word, the word hymns, which is an organ or the soul of the spirit of human being, because we feel excited, we feel joy to express ourselves as a group, as a family, that we can involve ourselves through singing. That's very important for us, all of us. So let us participate in worship by involving in different ways that we can be part of God and do his will. Let us be worshiper. Be worshiper by involving us, spending time with God in different ways. God expects that we should worship him in spirit and truth. We should not bring any excuses when we come to God. It should be our first priority and honest decision that in any moment of our lives, because we can refresh ourselves, who is David, we see the life of David, who was very much, he was a simple man that we know. He never had worldly education like many of us we have today. He was a simple man, but if you see his life experience, most of his young life he spent in the field, where he expressed God, his spirit, only through singing, only. He knew, I am sure, he developed a very personal relationship with God while he was a shepherd, nurturing the sheep. I think that is the reason God chose David to be somebody very important in his carrying out God's work for the Israelites. He has reached climax because he built a very personal relationship with God through worshiping him. 
the next that is the way that we can celebrate what god does to us when we worship him when we take it in a personal life in a such a way that we enjoy we get blessing from god we are willing to participate and we want to come to god in a free mind and we want to get a relationship that can change our life so we have many things to celebrate we should say god thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have no boundaries we can come from anywhere and worship you you are ready to listen to us that's a very wonderful uh, opportunity for all of us next one worship can be a proclamation that is true also that we are here we are here that not only to worship god but what we worship we need to witness to others we need to witness to other go out not remaining where we are worship is not only morning and evening at home or coming to church in regularly we should be ready to speak to our god any times huh? that is the god wants for us we need to have a obedience relationship knowing god only i believe through prayers we know god but we can also personally know god through our worship our minds can be clean we can be ready to worship god when we contemplate and try to invite god in our personal lives in our corporate lives to work with us that relationship is very vital once we make that habit god will be willing to accept our worship because we are ready to share what we know with others we are responsible people god has chosen us to worship him and he says what you experience with me please go out to the world and share that that many may worship me so that is the proclamation that we need to do yes we come to church as a family to worship huh church gathers people we sit here as a family we worship publicly or corporately but that's not enough that's not enough we when we why we come to church to worship because we want to witness our worship with one another we want to share what we know with our friends our colleagues that they know our god through our form of worship the worship can be also further that we can have two products of worship two products of worship so remember the between worship and celebration it has a very good relationship they go hand to hand they go together the relationship between celebration and worship the product of worships the first one can be like this spiritually lost people they come back to god uh, through worship because they were lost now once they know god through worship they are coming back they are no more backsliding they are getting opportunity to continue their life see what happens someone will be leading his life long time away from god but once he knows the association that is your task and my task to convince someone come to come to god so spiritually lost people can be saved again through worship as we see paul if we know the story of paul who was preaching who was associating with in corinth he did not go there to judge people he did not go there to compare their lifestyle he wanted to see the people how they may know god what is the form of their worship he wanted them to worship god in a spiritual manner in a right forum that god will be pleased through worship 
we need to also worship God in a such a way, in a reverent and a spiritual manner that we are coming to a heavenly Father who expect a certain standard from us that we worship Him. He accepts us. If we see in uh, chapter uh, John chapter 12, uh, chapter uh, verse 32, it says, when Jesus came to this world, he was inviting each one of us. He was, uh, he was inviting and asking you and me to join with him, asking that those who will draw to me, they will be lifted up. So, are we people today that we can be lifted up with Jesus through our worship habit? We need to be with Jesus, learn from him, and be with him. He is calling you and me to be part with him as a partnership through our worship method. In Psalm chapter 57 verse 9 says here, that David, who was giving emphasis on the evangelistic effort, that the worship is a part of evangelistic series. And he says people experience God through worship. People know God they have a personal relationship with God in a such a way that can be, cannot be separated. It will continue through worship. So let us be seeker of God that we are ready to understand God and his method of worship. We need to prepare our minds such a way, need to be very firm and stand that God appreciates and accepts our worship. Let us prepare our minds and ourselves that God accepts our worship. He likes our form of worship and we can be his children. That we need to know. The second product, as I said, spiritually saved people. Spiritually saved people can be sent out to carry the masses. Because they are spiritually saved and because of the worship. After worship, they are spiritually saved. Now they are ready to go to the world and talk about Jesus. How they worship, how they pray, how they talk, and what, how they have Bible studies and all these activities, spiritually how they develop their lives, that can be shared because they are now spiritually saved. When we are spiritually saved, it is our duty and task, we go out and proclaim this message to the world, share, because knowing and practicing ourselves is not enough. It's not enough. We need to go out and give the same message. Once we were lost, now we are saved because of Jesus. So same responsibility we have each one of us to go and save people. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 8. 1 to 8. Lord, we know, he is sitting on the throne. He is in heaven. He is seeing you and me. He is contemplating what to do with this human race. The world is very troublesome, very unstable, critical, but God is so patient. He is so kind. He is still waiting that we have still opportunity to change our lifestyle. We can be saved. So he is there. He is trying to save all of us. He is not yet bringing his judgment. 
He is waiting. He is asking you and me in this text who is ready to do his work? Who is ready to be sent? Who is ready to be sent? Isaiah responded very quickly, very promptly. And he heard the message of God. When this invitation came, he immediately said, God, here I am. Please send me. Please send me. How he came to know God through his worship habit. He came to know God. He realized how God is important in his life. You and me. Can we say the same way today, this morning, that we are Isaiah? We will respond very quickly, very fast, like Isaiah to go out. God, we are ready. We want to be Isaiah. We want to go. Please send us. We are here. We don't want to miss this opportunity in life because Isaiah did not miss. He got his life back. So let us, let us respond quickly like Isaiah and get ready to go out. There are two, again, two challenges of worshippers. You and me, we regularly face some challenges of worshipping. Why? We don't feel sometimes comfortable, sometimes we are reluctant, sometimes we, many a times we miss to come to worship. Myself I do many times that I miss. I need to acknowledge you. If we see the spirituality of the world, how it is going today, globally, if you look, because of a lot of developments, a lot of modernization, innovations, is killing our time. So we do not have much time to worship Lord because we are very much interested with what we have today before eyes and they are very easy. We feel coming to God and worshiping his sometime, I said, it should be a celebration for us, but we feel burdened. We don't have time. So says the first challenge, come to celebrate. How to come to celebrate to God? Because I will say or you will say, Oh, I have a lot of personal issues. I have my anxieties. I have my stress. I have my family problem. I have to take so many cares and I have to take care of my children. I have my school. I have financial problems. So many things we will bring in our lives to give excuses not to come to worship. But can we stand firm ourselves? So no, those elements should not trouble us. We need to celebrate to worship. Can we sing like David, praising to the Lord that, Lord, we are in the side of worship. Because we can only get salvation. We can only be with you if we worship you the way you want from your people. That is the thing that we need to think. Our personal issues should not be the obstacles of not worshipping according to his will. Because God expects from you and me a proper worship. This signifies that how obedient and faithful are we when we worship him. This next challenge that we face are we ready to tell others? Do we have that experience that what we know, are we ready to share with others? We know, but do we have time? Do we have resources that are we willing to go? That experience we face that we try to not to tell others. Jesus gave us the message and he says, what you know, go out and tell the others. Our experiences must be shared with others. That is the thing. We need to go and tell to the world about how to worship God. Who is true God? Who is Jesus Christ? Who is our personal savior? Who is our creator? We need to tell to the world 
We need to tell to the world that they are ready to listen. If I ask you a three simple questions this morning, where are we now in terms of worship? Where are we now in terms of worship? What is our position? Second one, are we in the side of worship? Third one, are we drawn to Christ? If we have the answer, what is our position in terms of worship? Okay. Do we worship properly? And the last one, are we with Christ? If we have, the answer is very good. Yes, if we can say, it's great. Then we can claim that we are the true worshiper. We are the true worshiper. Lord is asking you and me to spend enough time with him. Quality time with him. And no God is day. Refresh our mind such a way that God see that we worship him in a right manner. We would like to spend time and we would like to share what we know through worship. He is asking you and me to be the witness for others through our worship style. That worship should be something very holy very acceptable, very eh, high standard of accepting by God. As uh, in my conclusion that I would say, a famous writer, Gatsamson, Gatsamson, he says like this, worship is the goal of evangelism. And evangelism is the fruit of worship. You see? Worship is the goal of evangelism and the evangelism is the fruit of worship. Can we do that? Huh? Can we do that? If we have that, because worship must bring change in our life. It should have opportunity for others. It is a form of evangelism. And that evangelism will give us the result. Many will come to know Christ through our form of worship. When we do it in a right manner, according to the will of God, many souls can be harvested for kingdom. So, our worship can encourage the evangelism. It can definitely can encourage. So if we have that, let us all be true worshiper that can be acceptable by God and we should be ready to witness through our worship. To the world, world is waiting. There are still many corners of the world that the people do not know Christ. So through worship, we can evangelize and we can harvest the result. We worship should be such a way. There are no boundaries for worship. We should be worshiping in as a boundaryless from everywhere to everywhere, from anywhere to anywhere. Should be. When we face certain situation, circumstances, we need to ask God. Maybe the situation coming to us because God wants to test. When difficult situation comes, how we worship the Lord. So I ask the congregation today that let us focus faithfully to worship God. Worship God such a way that God can accept us, God can accept our hearts, and we are committed to worship the Lord the way he expects from you and me. Lord bless you all of us, and I hope this message will give us a lesson that we need to learn to worship God in a right manner that we can be his children. Thank you.